right. welcome to Talking True, where I have in-depth conversations with near-death experiences, mystics, healers, and people who are waking up to their true nature. And today we have a special gift because we have with us a young woman who is extremely talented and she is going to be sharing her gifts with us today. Her name is, I uh, wait, so, Saule Iona yeah. Baida, correct? Saule yeah. Iona Baida. Mm -hmm. And she originates from a mystical place and she is a conscious musician. She's a sound healer and she's host of the Star Seed Network. So, Saule, thank you so much for joining me today. Mm. It's a pleasure to have you with me. Mm, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this lovely introduction. And I'm so excited to be here. Wonderful. So you told me you're from Estonia, correct? Um, Lithuania. Oh, Lithuania. Lithuania. I got them mixed up. Oh, it's, <laughs> yeah, Lith they're all close by. <laughs> close by, right, right, right. So, so yeah. do you live there now? Or are you living in the U.S.? So right now I actually live in Mexico, in Oaxaca, oh, which is also very, very beautiful land, very spiritual, very connected with their ancestry. Um, and I kind of grew up in between Lithuania and the U.S. because my parents are Lithuanian, but they lived in the U.S. and Lithuania. So I got a very unique mixture of both worlds, which are very different. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, um, and and Awak, well, how how do you say Awaka? Awaka, Awaka, yes, mm -hmm. um, is incredibly powerful. I I remember my yeah. husband and I went there. I think it was in the nineties. The energy of the place is really intense, actually. Yes, uh -huh. it's it's very strong. Um, sometimes it's even you know it's hard to like just get things done on a day to day basis because the energy here is is very powerful and you know especially working with some of the you know um elders of the traditions here and people who hold that sacred flame of of remembrance mm -hmm. in upholding the the ancestral ways has been really profound in and you know just it, finding my, my more of my purpose in this life and this body <laughs> Yes. So can, do you want to share what brought you to this kind of recognition of what your purpose was? Because that's something mm -hmm. that many people struggle with, isn't it? Finding their purpose. What is their purpose? You know, how did yes. that manifest for you? Yeah. So I guess I would say as well, <clears throat> pardon me, is that a lot of the times we believe that like our purpose is something that we're supposed to be doing, quote unquote. Like my purpose is to do this, but something I've realized over the years is, um, it's like how we're doing it, how we're embodying what we're being. And this purpose has kind of just unfolded more and more over the years. And since I had, I've had a lot of big awakening moments I could share and big aha moments and seeing all the angels and my spirit guides and my family and all these beautiful like ever expanding layers because we're just stripping back layers essentially into what we actually are and one I think the the purpose that came through for me was to shine and so I was like what's my purpose what's my purpose and my guides told me to shine and then I'm like, okay, so what do I actually do with that? Like, what am I supposed to be doing on a day to day basis? And then, you know, kind of more more guidance comes and certain things to do for a certain period of time. So I, I try not to get too attached to whatever I'm doing because I know that this overarching kind of thread of my life is to be this embodiment, to be this beacon for others and to hold a frequency here. And to basically, yeah, just shine so that other people can remember who they are and feel who they are and, and to touch them in some way, whether it be through music. Um, for a little while, I was doing, you know, like tarot readings and, and Reiki healings. And then that kind of swept away as my consciousness expanded and mm -hmm. moving into doing more quantum parts work, you know, trauma healing sessions. And then, you know, also holding as well the sound healing and 
the various activations of the voice that have happened and just continuously allowing myself to expand and when something no longer resonates to let go of it and move along and trust that what's coming next will will bring that ever deeper but I do feel that um God gave me a gift of the voice and communication and that has been a, a big part of what I share in the podcast, in music, in singing and holding spaces. So it's it's yeah, I think for everyone it's going to be it, it's just you the more that you that you heal, the more that you let go of falsehood, the more you connect with the realness of what you truly are. So it's not so much something that we have to go searching for outwardly. It's something that we alchemize from the inside out when we're ready to hold it. Yes. I, I love what you said. You alchemize it from the inside out. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we all access that differently, right? Whether it's through yeah. meditation or being in nature or, or, you know, whatever that looks like in, mm -hmm. in an organic way. So, so with respect to your music, do you, have you created music? online or do you sing and play music where you are in your environment hey, great <laughs> yeah so I do have um some music online that I recorded kind of starting in the pandemic starting back from when these all these if started things so 2021 and then um, I released an EP with my brother and then another one last this yeah last year in 2023 um and it's it's funny because they're all kind of a different phase of of awakening um the first one is more kind of like a little bit pop influence a little bit r&b second one is very acoustic very stripped back and then what i'm working on this year is releasing more medicine music um mantras pure sounds very very much just honoring this this deepening journey and as well you know I, I'm working with a um, sound healing master here in Oaxaca and we do these sound healing meditations together live in person and people come from all over the world who are visiting and locals and we travel around um, a lot sharing these transmissions and it's it's something that is very very powerful and and very real and authentic and working to also get that online to share with more people in the world um, but yeah it's been really deeply fulfilling to create and to sing and to me like singing is like breathing and when I forget to sing, it's like I forget to breathe. And then I'm like, why am I feeling so out of whack? And then I realized because I didn't sing today. And then just coming back to it again and again. Mm, wonderful. Because, um, you know, there's a whole yogic tradition with mm. respect to um, transmissions, transmissions from the great beings through mantra. Yeah, um, through the sound vibrations of that, and um, I was given the mantra Om Namah Shivaya mm. um, when I was first given initiation, and it's just so incredibly potent and and powerful. Yeah. And it took me years actually to realize that it's the mantra of dissolution, mm. and um, it's really it really cuts at the heart of anything that stands in the way of recognizing your authentic nature, your true self. Mm, so um beautiful. yeah I'm really with you I love I love that so so what kind of mantras mm. do you chant are you chanting um I the past year the past few years actually I've been working a lot with green Tara um the green Tara mantra has been such a comfort in any moments of fear or uncertainty and and I feel very connected with her and <clears throat> just yeah receiving receiving her guidance on this path recently also a big one has been for me has been Om Namo Gurudev Namo this return of our divine recognition as well and I think there's a recording there's a recording by Snatam Kaur a live one of their mantra and I went through a phase um this past summer where I just listened to it on repeat for hours and hours a day yes <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, it was just medicine. It was just ah. Oh. I know she's she's wonderful, Snatham Carl. She's been to um, the ashram here on Paradise Island where I live at Shivananda Ashram. She usually comes every year. She didn't come obviously when the pandemic was in full throttle, but um, she usually comes every December, and oh, it's just exquisite listening to her and um, you know joining her. in in the chanting so so it's fantastic so yeah i mean um i'd love to know you know as soon as you get the mantras online and um or if you have like um events where people can join you that would be you know online that would be really wonderful Yeah. to be able to do Yeah, that's in like the next the next phase of development is is yeah, of course, you know, learning the technology cuz it's like that that Yes. masculine structure aspect of, you know, figuring out the ways to set it up so it can sound good and run well. And then once we have that container, just letting it letting it all flow through. And that's that's a big goal this year. I have a few little mantra loops. I have one on my YouTube channel. That's a Ganesh mantra. And Mm. some of the yeah, <laughs> some of the the ways that I, I have been playing around with this is kind of you know, singing as as like singing a verse, like something in English, and then the mantra, and then kind of weaving in, in back in and out and, and just exploring this kind of new new world of, of sacred music and yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Exquisite, exquisite. And then do you do any chanting on your podcast? No, actually, the podcast is mostly talking, um, but yeah, that's a that's a good idea. I I also have been doing some light language transmissions on my Instagram and on my YouTube channel, um, because that came through very strongly for me last year, and you know it's it's very similar. Some words even sound very similar to Sanskrit words, and just channeling pure languages of light. So. <clears throat> yeah, on the podcast, it's it's mostly, you know, just speaking and, and interviewing and sharing. I share some practices, share affirmations. Switch back again. Uh -oh. oh, my gosh. My apologies. That's Um, okay. can you hear me? Yes, that's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> okay, yes. So on the podcast, it's, um, you know, sharing interviews with other creators and light workers and, um, you know, just transmissions, things that I'm realizing and processing as, as I'm awakening and sharing practices and affirmations and mantras and certain things that tools basically to help people and just to add to their toolbox. Um, Wonderful. and yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, Fantastic. Yeah. mm And and so do you um do you plan to stay in Oaxaca to do this work or were you just kind of led there? How did that work? yeah well it, it's actually been about um two years nearly two years and I was I was definitely guided there um and came through with in dreams in soul family connections and miracles that just manifested to make it possible and can I've just yeah I've just been very comfortable here I felt very at home very safe and I do feel that I really enjoy having this grounding of these mountains kind of holding me because I'm a very airy watery person so I love having the grounding energy around me And yeah, the, the mission here is to expand, to build healing centers. People can come visit retreat centers and also, you know, traveling, um, but traveling from a home base, having a, a solid home to come back to, which I find really, really comforting. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's beautiful. And I seem to remember when I was there in Oaxaca, there's a there's a sacred place, I forget the name of it, but it's on a kind of a, a mound or something. And I think they Mm they hmm. Yeah. used Yeah, Montalban. to, that's the one, Montalban. Mm hmm. I remember going there, and this is really 
some years prior to the awakening I had. I had the awakening, mm -hmm. radical, radical awakening in 1989, mm -hmm. but I think it was just a year or two before then. My husband and mm -hmm. I went to Oaxaca and we went to, to Monte Alban and there was, the energy was so strong there. It was like my head was spinning and I felt like I was being pulled. It's like pulled. And we both ended up actually with almost like a migraine. It, it was so mm -hmm. very, very intense. And um, yeah. again, it's a special place. Yes, it, it really is. And yeah, recently I had a, a very profound healing there because <laughs> um, I go there a, um, quite a bit more or less because um, the person that I'm working with Maestro from the Zapotec tradition he kind of hosts he holds private ceremonies in Montalban and, and invites people he's one of the only people who has access because a lot of people have kind of disrespected this the sacred places over over time so it's it's a really amazing experience to go there at sunset and seeing um, Venus because everything is very aligned with Venus and the solstice and if you're there on an equinox day um, there's no shadow because the sun is like directly above you because it's all very perfectly aligned and I actually had a really powerful experience there um, about a month ago with my mom who was who was visiting and we have a lot we've had a, a challenging relationship that we're healing now and um, we were being taken through the ceremony together and I just felt the healing of, you know, so, so many lineages of women in my family, like four generations back, this specific pattern. And it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. And just purging that out of my body. And there's this very specific place um, that is a literal portal, <laughs> like it's a literal portal to a, a higher dimension. And we were there in ceremony and I felt really called to like walk through it. Um, and it was in the night. So we were just there under all the stars and very quiet and private. And I I went through the portal after asking permission, of course, and feeling guided to do it. I went through and then I just got so sleepy and I just lay down and like fell asleep right there on the relax <laughs> and I don't know how long I was out but I was somewhere my soul was somewhere else it was getting a healing somewhere somewhere else and I just felt the stars right above me and was just melting into that rock and earth and even after we were leaving and we we're in the car like I still didn't fully come down for like about 40 minutes I was yeah. like I'm here but not here there's something happening and even though I can't clearly like see it I know that like I'm there's some some transmission going on here yes yeah and you know like, there's a saying I forget who to who I who I could attribute it to but um, mm. pain pain travels through families until mm -hmm. someone is strong enough to be able to heal it right is the way yeah. it works especially in the female lineage oftentimes oh, yeah <laughs> yeah and and especially if um there's there's a pattern of denying yourself denying your truth not yes. um, feeling comfortable sharing who you are or sharing your seeing that's often the often the, the kind of pain point for for many mm. women through their lineage yeah. so yeah it's often about that right so yeah and the yeah. yogis yeah the yogis actually say and I love this and I, I've seen it ev evidence of this but they say that when someone's brave enough or ready enough to do the work in their in their lineage then this healing goes back seven generations and um mm. and it's it's true mm. yeah yeah it really it, it is a gift to to feel that and access that and I think a, uh, I feel a lot of people that you know are doing this work now we're kind of like oh my god I have to do all this for all of my like generations past but it's amazing because the ripples are are you get to witness the changes that are created in your family just by you doing the work 
and yeah. like yeah like for example I never thought that you know me and my mom would be able to like do these kinds of things together or that we'd be able to heal together and it was really interesting because her awakening happened around the same time as mine even though we were not in contact so I had to go through the whole process of you know letting go of you just realizing like this is a human being I don't have to put all of my expectations of who I need my mother to be on them <laughs> instead I can surrender into this divine mother this all-encompassing loving divine mother energy and let that be my source of comfort and nourishment that is unconditional <laughs> yes. always there when I need her always gonna give and yeah it's it's been amazing amazing to see and a lot of women carry this pattern of like servitude, like feeling that they need to serve in order to be worthy, feeling like it, it's actually a very human pattern that we carry in our DNA that we believe that we're like a slave race or we believe we're here to serve because of these very ancient, you know, kind of manipulations that go way, way, way back. Yeah. So especially for us as women to claim our truth and claim our power and to speak up and mm -hmm. use our voice is so amazing and it, it creates such ripples and this is a lot of what I, I hold kind of in these um because I do these workshops of singing and connecting with the shamanic drum and it's a, exactly this kind of space for women especially to break through the blockages of the voice and to be able to scream, like just <laughs> scream and cry and and yell and sing and speak and say all these things that all of our ancestors didn't get to because they had to be silent and there like literally was no space for that. And especially coming from, you know, a generational line that went through a lot of war and famine and mm -hmm. genocide, um, things that aren't even talked about in history books. Um, it's like we carry ugh, we carry so many poverty codes, so many like um, famine codes, so many not enough like curses. So it's been a real dedication and a real journey these past couple of years in in breaking these curses clearing them healing them and learning to be like a whole create a whole new structure for the generations that will come after me and you know creating manifesting generational abundance generational you know healing generational safety when what has been passed down to me has been so different and it's it's amazing it's like I can feel all these beings <laughs> like it's very important to honor our ancestors and and when we work with them and and offer to them just through our life just through our life's work and I can feel them all around me being like yay yeah. <laughs> say the things that we didn't get to say like stand up to them like say what's on your heart don't just carry it around because then we you know we get to this place where we can become bitter or resentful and this happens a lot when when women are aren't allowed to to speak and express so it's it's been a big mission on on just embodying that within myself and making that safe space for for others to be able to do so yeah and that's that's really beautiful because um you know two two things from what you said one is that through my own healing and doing the inner work that I've done you know mm. for decades now I did notice that when I worked on a specific issue that I knew related to the lineage, um, even though I never shared that or spoke about it to family members, when I would go and visit, because my family live in the UK, mm -hmm. when I would go and visit, I'd notice a difference in yeah. with respect to the way we related. And I'd see kind of miracles and movements of grace in their lives, which I knew intuitively related to the work that I'd done on the personal mm -hmm. shadow and conditioning and boundaries and all of those things. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I really saw very, very clear evidence of that. And the other part of all of that, of course, is that if you don't have someone in your family, and, and I'm speaking specifically with respect to the fem feminine, the female lineage, if you don't have somebody who's ready and willing to do that work, then there's a tendency as the a woman gets older and goes into the crone stage mm -hmm. that there's even more of a depression because because you know the wisdom 
of that woman isn't allowed to sort of break free and speak mm -hmm. for her. It's yes. always minimized or it's always controlled because, because again, there's a fear of the fear of not being safe or not being heard mm. or being kicked out of the community. So, so this works really huge and it's really far reaching and um, it mm. has, it has massive effects, even though we don't necessarily see the minute details of it. It does. Yeah. It, it has a freeing effect for, for everyone in, in our family and not, not just everybody in our family but you know women worldwide you yeah. know because we're freeing mm. up this energy to be mm. able to speak from our truth from our soul from our from the higher self and mm. um something is set free that yeah. uh, um that travels and um has has the ability to awaken others Mm. Yes, absolutely. And that's, that's a big reason why, you know, we can hold so much hope for where the world is going. And there's so, of course, there's so much like messaging about, oh, like the world is ending and all that stuff. But, but there really are so many powerful beings who are dedicating hours and hours of their time just to healing the planet and wishing well for the planet and healing themselves. And I always tell people, I'm like, sometimes like the greatest thing that you can do to save the world is find your inner peace, is to bring together these inner aspects, these inner parts of yourself and, you know, listen to to both sides of them. Because what I've also realized very strongly is that misogyny is internalized. Mm -hmm. Like we need to swallow a little bit of that poison to even be able to function in this world. So it's like you go going deeper into this process, like I've discovered my own inner misogynist. And I'm like, oh, okay. I have this like inner masculine part that has been um, – in this dynamic with my inner feminine parts or has been treating my body in this way. And then it's like creating this reconciliation internally between them. And it's like our, our microcosm is the macrocosm. Our inner universe is the outer universe. And when we can resolve these patterns that are in our body and our vibration and our, and our parts and our inner dynamics, like that situation, if you're dealing with something like that on the outside, it can disappear overnight. <laughs> like, yes, you can just move on overnight, like something just quantum shifts. And this is, I feel, is the quickest way to to do a quantum leap. It's like it's it's, you know, it's great to like, you know, be positive and and have our manifestations and, you know, think about what what we want. But at the end of the day, like we got to do that that just like gardening work of like pulling out these weeds and finding where these patterns first came from. And it can take like years and <laughs> it can take a long time. And, but the more that we do it, the more that we make space, the more we allow this light in and we embody more of it and we activate people who we yeah. come into contact with as well. Yes, yes. It's it's really about honoring, I'm glad you said that, but honoring the masculine and the feminine within our our own yeah. being. Honoring yeah. them and um really looking to see what we need to work on. Well, you know, I always mm. call it shadow work, but looking into the darkness and the fear and the anxiety, the self-hatred or self-denial or whatever's there, and um being honest about about what you're seeing and finding and willing to yeah. do the work and again you know the master yogis i love the way they speak about this because they speak about making the sun and the moon rise mm. and the 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 moon represents the feminine and the sun mm -hmm. represents the masculine so it's really about honoring both and yes. bringing them both up um, moving them up through the body and through the chakras and into the crown crown chakra and really allowing both to shine equally and understanding mm. the importance of um, the inner work and then the outer expression of that work okay. and living living true to it. Um, because if, if all you're doing is the inner work, but you're still afraid to speak up for yourself or shine your light or mm. share your gifts, 
then there's as much imbalance as you know not really doing any anything you know yeah. So, yeah so there has to be some form of kind of outward expression as well um yeah well I think it's also you know honoring our process and all of that because sometimes we we have to go just really in our cocoon and mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. honor where we where we are with that and mm-hmm. Like, it's just so, it's beautiful to witness our own polarities as well and how we can swing from one extreme to the other. I've noticed this a lot in my life and just really holding this trust that like balance will be found, balance will come together. And as long as we're continuously being conscious and continuously holding space, and I love to say as well, it's like shadow is only that which has yet to have light shed upon it. So once we become aware of something, it's no longer shadow Mm -hmm. and we can do our best to hold it and accept it and Mm -hmm. give it a space within ourselves. And then just by, just by like holding it with love, it will start to dissolve and, and cry through and, and move through and, and all this. And there definitely comes a certain jumping off point where it's like, okay, I got to take everything that I've been doing this past, you know, few years or however long it's been that I've been in my cocoon and it's time to just break free and and come out and and bring it out into the world and exactly, you know, this inner sacred union that you're speaking of this inner balance of the masculine and feminine and has been a big big process of mine over the years because it's you know in the past I've swung way into the masculine way into the feminine Mm -hmm. and exactly this you know bringing these polarities together and seeing how they can kind of swim back and forth and feed into one another and where which parts of my day can be more dominated by the masculine which one's more feminine and and holding space for all of that and it's it's an ongoing process like i <laughs> i haven't i haven't mastered anything yet i was still like just learning and being with all of it and just honoring all all of that you know journey yes and 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 really going with the flow of where it's taking you right and um, yeah. not not freezing <laughs> yeah absolutely well, yeah or yeah. trying to hold hold every you know you've created a nice safe split space and you've done a few you know projects you've got a few creative projects and okay <laughs> that's enough for now. oh my uh, gosh yeah yeah and then yeah I think it's it's beautiful that when we call out to the universe for help the universe will help us it'll it'll come to us and so if we're in a place where like how do I figure this out? Like, help me, angels, help me, guides, help me, universe, help me. And it it will come. Like the person or the podcast or the post or the book that's going to activate you will mm-hmm. come into your field. And so it's beautiful to to just have kind of that 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 trust within our within ourselves and know that we can we can break out of whatever whatever we've created whatever we're feeling yeah and you know also trust I always say trust the not knowing yeah you know just lean into the not knowing because because when you at least acknowledge you don't know anything yeah (laughs) what you're doing you don't have a clue (laughs) um help help always arrives it always always does and um Mm. we're somehow sort of pointed the ways pointed you know out you know and yeah. uh, as long as we can take one step, then the next step will become evident as well. So um, mm. it's really all, always such an amazing process, right? Of uh, yeah. just asking and then seeing what manifests. Yeah, and dropping the resistance as well, because that's when the miracles happen. It's like when we <laughs> keep trying to force and push and we're just hitting up against resistance and then we're just like, oh. Yeah. I can't do this anymore. I have to surrender. And then, you know, having one of those big, big old cries and just being like, God, take the wheel. <laughs> like, yes. I trust, just do it. Like, I just trust you. I'm giving up. I'm surrendering. That's usually the moments where right after the solution arises and it's it's a very comforting place to be. And I always remind myself, I'm like, just be in the being in the heart. The heart is our home. 
<laughs> like when our mind gets can get so twisted up and all this stuff and when we come back to our heart and we do our best to inhabit our heart even just taking like you know 15 20 minutes a day to just sit and focus on breathing into the heart space i'm just thinking i was just thinking today i was like wow if the whole world like took 20 minutes a day to breathe into their heart <laughs> so many things yes. would be different because yes. <laughs> that's where the divine is right here like within us and it's our it's our easiest access point and like Sometimes you may start filling your heart and you may just need to cry and you may cry for like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, but it's, it's part of the process and it's honest and it's real and it, it's raw. Yes. Yes. And, um, it will never lie to you or lead you astray. You know? Yeah. It's the heart really is your intuition. It's your kind of the place where yeah. your intuition resides and um listening to that is can be a lifesaver actually mm. yeah so. yeah and the womb as well for women yeah i feel that the womb is is this pure feminine like like power yeah. and then the mind the masculine lives kind of more in the mind and up here and then the heart is like where they meet in that union Mm -hmm. yes beautiful mm -hmm. beautiful beautiful well I'm just seeing the time and we've mm -hmm. come close to the end of our time together but before you head out before we close off um would you like to tell people where they can find you and what mm -hmm. you have if you have anything on offer in terms of you know yeah. events and so on yes absolutely um so you can always listen listen to me on you know spotify apple podcasts wherever you prefer to stream your podcasts at the starseed network podcast uh, you can listen to my music um, wherever you like to listen to your music on um, under artist name saule ilona vaida uh, you can find me on instagram at saule the starseed and i also host one-to-one -one quantum healing parts work sessions so kind of what i talked about here about you know unifying and holding space for all our different, you know, ego fragments and how they manifest in the body and the mind. And this has been one of the tools that has really led me into deep, deep healing. So I love offering that work. And and I do a hold in-person spaces in Oaxaca, Mexico. So if you happen to come to Oaxaca <laughs> or somewhere close by, we are here. Sometimes we travel around Mexico and yeah, who knows? Maybe there'll be some more like, online events and, and things coming up soon. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Sole, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been mm -hmm. really beautiful. You can really feel the, the heart energy in the mm -hmm. conversation. And uh, it's, been, it's been really lovely. Mm -hmm. So thank you once more. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so, so much for holding this beautiful space and, and holding this heart frequency as well. Cause that it's just it just creates such a beautiful container to be able to to be there and, and hold it and and share it. So I really, really appreciate getting to getting to share with you and speak with you and and your audience to everyone listening as well. Thank you for being here and, and receiving this and thank you for your presence. Thank you so much. Mm. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today. I really, really appreciate it as always. I recognize that your time is valuable and I uh, feel very honored that you're willing to share that time with us today. So thank you. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please share with friends and family members. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please, please subscribe. That would be really lovely. And um, it's good to ch shine light and share the good news mm. about the truth of the one in the many and the many in the one. So thank you so, so much. Take it easy. Be well. And bye for now. Bye. Mm -hmm.